Welcome to Recordology. Recordology Rewind. Some of our best that you might have missed. All right, guys. Welcome back to Recordology. I am here at Old Main, the Old Main building up here at the University of Colorado, uh, circa 1870, I believe. But more importantly, if you are a Glenn Miller fan as I am, you will know that this movie features prominently in the Glenn Miller story movie. Um, as the building that the Glee Club is rehearsing in the background of a few of those shots. Oh, listen. It's the Glee Club rehearsing. I love that song, don't you? What, Little Brown Jug? Uh-huh. Oh, that's sort of a tin air tune, Helen. So check out my other video about Glenn Miller filming locations up here. But today we're going to go look at some gold records. So that's going to be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment. But right now, let's go check out the gold records. Okay, guys, a brand new voiceover for this Rewind episode. If you want to hear or see the original, check it out. It's still up from a couple of years ago. As you can tell by the intro, I was a little nervous in doing these, which made me chuckle going back. I don't know why I was so nervous. But I had a whole lot of music in the background. This is before we were monetized, before I even thought about that kind of thing. So I really needed to do a new voiceover to this one. But it's also cool because I can sort of calm down, take a deep breath, and I don't necessarily need to say um every other word, hopefully, and we'll just check it out. So this building built in 1870 is called Old Main up at the University of Colorado. It houses the Glenn Miller Gallery and a lot of other cool exhibits of famous alumni of Colorado University. Up until recently, this was open to the public. You could just walk in there and check out all of this cool stuff free of charge. And it's really museum quality. Super, super cool. I can't wait to go back. I don't know what current restrictions are on things, but here are some pictures on the wall of some of the, that's actually the old main building right there. And showing some of the history of the university, obviously CU being the college town of Boulder, Colorado. Here are some exhibits of famous alumni and the most famous alumni to me is going to be Glenn Miller. And more specifically, the archives that is housed up here, the Glenn Miller archives, which houses everything to do with Glenn Miller and most big band stuff, including all of the extant music materials that aren't at Sony Legacy. But they have this awesome Glenn Miller gallery with all of these gold records. So check this out. This is the mecca of Glenn Miller record collecting. And we're going to look at the first gold record awarded in February of 1942 in just a second. On the right there, and I'm going to show it here in a second, is a picture of Glenn Miller being awarded this. Now, this is a February 1942. He was awarded this by RCA Victor. Now, gold records today and platinum and all that stuff is awarded by the RIAA. So if you look at the RIAA records of the first gold record, it doesn't line up with this because this is done by a record label. In fact, this is the first time that was done and we'll show that record in a minute. Some cool sort of just effects of Glenn Miller's. Here's some music. His uh, handwritten copy of Moonlight Serenade before it was even called Moonlight Serenade. As you can see, it says Miller's tune. Lots of pencil marks and things on there. What a treasure. Truly, truly indicative of what's behind the curtain, so to speak, with Glenn Miller and the archives. And they change it out from time to time, which is really cool. You can go up there and see different stuff. Here's a Grammy Award. Never been that close to a Grammy Award and probably never will be again. <laughs> but super neat to see this. One of his actual trombones. And you'll see some, uh, there's a pack of uh, Chesterfield cigarettes. That's actually not his, but it's there to lend. Uh, uh, but this is the his. This is his cigarette case given to him by the Glen Island Casino for his long tenure at that location and a lot of cool stuff on the walls to see here all these beautiful records presented in gold format of the same format that they earned the achievement so if it earned achievement as an lp it is presented as a gold record in the lp format and as you can see most of these are just commercial pressings that are dipped in gold and a lot of cool ones on the wall here back i didn't have but maybe one or two glenn miller records when i filmed this so this was like i couldn't believe what i was seeing 
Love that label right there, one of my favorites. But here we are, the Holy Grail, guys. On the left, you can see the first gold record. I'm going to show you up close here in a second. A lot of LPs up here, a lot of really cool stuff. Some of those seven-inch records are actually awarded to Helen Miller herself. Okay, guys, here it is. This is the first gold record ever made. This is the same one pictured on the wall there a minute ago, being handed to Glenn Miller by RCA Victor for Chattanooga Choo Choo in 1942. It had sold 1.2 million copies at that point and was a treasure to behold in the industry and is now the gold standard, no pun intended or pun intended perhaps, of you know what music achievement is like now what is what are we looking at here this is actually not a record it's a it's a stamper so it's going to have a reverse of the record groove the record groove is going to protrude and the in-between spaces are going to recede so it is a positive metal stamper that has been painted gold and then a, a label has been adhered to it so it resembles a gold record but really it's a stamper now most of these are just pressings that are uh, plated in gold or dipped in gold. Up at CU, they also have this awesome uh, Glenn Miller ballroom that is a functioning facility. You can go take a look at that. I don't know why I cut to that right then. Again, this was pretty early on in recordology, so the uh, shaky camera work and uh, some of the uh, cuts aren't as good as <laughs> we do now. Here's some pictures of Glenn Miller and his family. That I believe is a picture of Stephen Miller, his son, who I met. Not did I just not did I just meet him, but I actually got to drive around with his son Stephen Miller in my Camaro, listening to bootleg copies. I'm glad he didn't know they were bootleg of Glenn Miller because he was really big about. There's somebody walking by. Wow, this is really polished. Um, he was really big about. Um, preventing the market from being flooded by bootleg stuff. It wasn't really bootleg. It was just copies of my own stuff. But here is some artifacts from Glenn Miller's history before his own orchestra playing in the Holly Moyer band here in Denver, some of the band ledgers and things. Again, this is, they have, you know, warehouses full of, of artifacts, but these are some of the artifacts from the history of Glenn Miller, and they are housed here free of charge to go up and view some instruments from some of his early bands. Now, Glenn Miller was very prominent in the big band scene before having his own band. He played with many bands, including Ben Pollock. He played with the Dorsey Brothers. He played with Red Nichols, amongst others. So he was very prominent. He arranged bands. He did all kinds of work, putting bands together and playing in them. So this jukebox 1947, and in the original video I said it was 1939, so I put the blip up there saying it was 1947, that's why that was there. But this uh, jukebox was dedicated in the late 90s, I believe. I was invited to a party up there at the Glenn Miller, or at the uh, old main building to dedicate it. That's where I met Glenn Miller's son and Alan Cass, who at the time was leading the Glenn Miller Archive, which is still thriving. And after the uh, party, uh, in my Camaro jumped Stephen Miller and we drove over to the archives and I was like a kid in a candy store going through all of this Glenn Miller material in this warehouse and it was just a once in a lifetime experience. Now this mural has a bit of a mystery to it. You'll see this guy in the middle with his eyes closed. It looks kind of like Glenn Miller. Some say that is a picture of Glenn Miller when he was a student at CU. He only went there for I believe a year and he didn't do that good academically. In fact, I think he flunked music. That's the sign of genius when you flunk the thing that you will become you know, known for. Here's another shot of one of his trombones. And it was it's just an amazing place to go see. I like to go up there about once a year. A lot of the Glenn Miller movie, uh, the Glenn Miller story from 1954 was filmed up there. Here's one of his microphones, an Electra Voice ribbon mic. This is the type of mic they would use for the radio transcriptions or the radio broadcast. Not exactly sure where he got this. Some say he got it from 20th Century Fox. He might have got it uh, from other sources as well. But this is one of the type that would be used to mic his band. This is the real deal, an Electra Voice recording or microphone, I guess. <laughs> Obviously, it's a recording mic. And another look at the gorgeous, gorgeous texture of this beautiful, my favorite, favorite record label, the Bluebird record label on one of these gold records. It's just phenomenal. By the way, 
Stay tuned to the very end of this video. I'm gonna show you something kind of well, cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It sure was a special one for me. Um, there it is, guys. The first gold record ever. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching. As always, happy record hunting. We'll see you next time. Felt a little awkward about talking loud there. <laughs> so it's kind of awkwardly quiet in the outro. So this is the other thing I wanted to show you guys. Totally not Glenn Miller related. But somebody has made a Lego representation of the University of Colorado campus. And it is quite a sight to behold. You can walk around this thing. It's got sounds, lights, parts of it are animated. And it's all made out of Legos. Again, this is on the, I think, the third floor of this old building built in 1870. And it is a phenomenal treasure because it's all free of charge. And it is a true museum experience. Even the kids can have fun up here looking at these cool exhibits like this Lego one. And definitely worth the time it would take to drive up there. And again, a lot of Glenn Miller filming locations in the area. Uh, most of that movie was filmed in Colorado, uh, including Lowry, which we're gonna go to Lowry and um, you know show some of the locations that they used uh, for the movie in that regard as well. I plan to get to it way sooner than now, but things just got busy. But here's a look at this awesome, awesome representation of the University of Colorado campus uh, up in Boulder, an amazing, amazing history. And I have been to some of these buildings up here with the dome, you're gonna see the planetarium. My wife and I went up there a couple of years ago to see a Lady Gaga laser light show, which was really cool. I just passed, oh, there it is, right there. And it was super neat, it's just super cool, an amazing campus. I did not go to school here, but it is one of the big colleges that we have in the Colorado area up in Boulder, Colorado. I love the theater. This is super cool, super awesome. And it's this video, I'm gonna close it out with another clip from the Glenn Miller story. I think it's kind of fitting saying goodbye, but thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Honestly.